In this lesson, we will examine two strategies to consider if you cannot answer a probability question and are forced to guess. The first strategy is to use your instincts. Here's what I mean. Without pausing this video, try to get a feeling for what the correct answer to the question might be. Here we have an unfair coin where the probability of getting tails on a toss is 0 0.3. Now, if we toss the coin three times, what is the probability that at least one of the tosses will turn up tails? So if you're unable to solve this question, what would be your guessing strategy? Well, first, you should try to get a feeling for the correct answer. Does it seem kind of likely that at least one toss will turn up tails? Does it seem very likely? Or does it seem very unlikely? We might ask, is the probability less than 0 0.5 or greater than 0 0.5? What do you think? Well, if you feel that the probability is greater than 0 0.5, you would eliminate answer choices A and B. Are there any other answer choices you might eliminate? Well, what about answer choice E? A probability of 0 0.973 suggests that it is highly likely for at least one toss to turn up tails. If this answer choice doesn't seem right to you, you would eliminate that as well. Now keep in mind that we are guessing here, so we have to be quite aggressive since we want to narrow our options down to just two or three answer choices. Now what other strategies might we use here? Well, another strategy involves identifying questions that might be solved using the complement. To see how this works, imagine that you work for a testing company and you are creating a very difficult probability question to ask students. Let's say that you just finished creating this fictitious question where the goal is to find the probability that event A occurs. Now what do you do? Well, you need to create five answer choices. So let's begin by calculating the correct answer choice. To do so, you'll have to solve the question you just created. Now your question happens to feature at least, and we've already learned that questions involving at least and at most can often be solved using the complement. So for this question, the probability that event A occurs will be equal to 1 minus the probability that event A does not occur. This means we must find the probability that event A does not occur. Let's say that this probability is equal to 0 0.3. At this point, when we add this to our calculations, we see that the probability that event A occurs is equal to 0 0.7. Since this is the correct answer, we must make it one of the answer choices. Our task now is to create four incorrect answer choices, or distractors, that might appeal to test takers. Now when test makers create distractors, they look for answers that students might arrive at incorrectly. For questions that involve complements, the most common mistake is to conclude that the complement is the correct answer. So if you want a good distractor, you should include this as one of the answer choices. Now at this point, let's say that we find some other good distractors and add them to the answer choices. We now have a very difficult question ready to go. Now let's imagine that we're taking the test and we encounter this question. Unfortunately, we can't solve it, so we're forced to guess. Now that we have an understanding of how test questions are created, we should be aware that for questions that may involve the complement, we should consider any answer choice that combines with another answer choice to add to one. In this question, we see the words at least, which suggests that a possible solution might involve the complement. So let's search our answer choices for pairs that add to one. We see that answer choices A and E add to one, so we might not eliminate them just yet. Here's another pair of answer choices that add to one, so we will leave them alone for the moment as well. Answer choice C, however, does not pair with another answer choice to add to 1. So let's eliminate this from our guesses. Now can we be certain that C is not the correct answer here? Absolutely not, but remember that we're guessing, which means we have to be aggressive. Now at this point, we might also use our instincts to eliminate other answer choices that don't feel correct. Alright, now let's return to the original question. In this question, we have at least so the solution might involve the complement. Since the solution might involve the complement, we should consider pairs of answer choices that add to one as potentially correct. So these two answer choices add to one, so we'll leave them alone, and these two answer choices add to one. 
since answer choice D does not pair with another answer choice to add to 1, we'll eliminate it. From here, when we combine this strategy with some intuition, we see that we can reduce our guessing options down to just two or three answer choices. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that if we're forced to guess on a probability question, we should use our instincts to eliminate answer choices that may seem unrealistic. And for questions that may involve the complement, we should eliminate answer choices that do not combine with other answer choices to add to one.